close attention. I'm only going through the squats. All right, let's start with Genesis chapter 10. And we are going to begin at verse 6. Genesis 10 and verse 6. Wait, before we begin, though, the name Africa, Africa, Africa. Now, we all know where it originated from. Who can help me here? Aqu uh, Aquila. It's a white Roman general named Leo Scipio Africanus. Very good. That's Queen's Kent? He said, <laughs> Leo Scipius Africanus. Write that down. Now, let me add, go, go back to Queen's Camp. Uh, Aquila, I'm going back to you now since you answered that question. He became known, his name was put on, mm, I don't want to give the answer. Who did he conquer? Uh, he conquered Hannibal. Very good. During what war? You're going good. You're going good. I'm not sure. You're out of the mud. You're right. You're out of the mud, so you're good. Uh, he has saved you brothers from Atlantic City over there. He's redeemed y'all. He's helped y'all. Um, Solomon in the back. <laughs> the second Punic Wars. The second Punic Wars. P-U-N-I-C. Very good. Very good. You brothers write that down. What scripture proves that Esau, the white man puts his name, that he names continents after himself, names lands after himself? Jerron got his hand up. Let me hear Jerron. I'm surprised your hand is up. Let's see. Let's see what you got. Uh, you'll go to Psalms 49 and 11. Very good. Write that down. Boom. Psalms 49 verse 11. Isaac, can you read that for us? Psalms 49 verse 11 so we can all be, be uh, edified. Psalms chapter 49 and verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. So when a white man conquers a land, he puts his name upon the land. That's where the term Africa, the name Africa, came from. Leo Scipios Africanas. So now, let's go to Genesis chapter 10, verse 6, Isaac. Genesis chapter 10 and verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush. Now the name Ham. I want you to listen very carefully. The name Ham or Hamitic. Ham became the father of who? Yeah, he became the father of the dark nations, not the Negro. Okay, now let's look that up in the Bible dictionary. Have a seat, I read I'm coming right back to you. I'm not going to forget about you. Go ahead. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. Okay, now, there's a popular term used amongst Negrodom, a very popular term, and it's called, they say, I'm trying to make sure I don't give you no answers, they say they are Kemetic. Kemetic. Have y'all heard that? K H E M E T I C. Kemetic. Who can explain that term to me? Kemetic. You will hear many Negroes use this term, many Afrocentric Negroes. All right, Isaac, help the brothers out, please. Let me see if you come. The back. word Kemet comes from Ham. Chum. That's how it's pronounced. Very good. The word Kem is the same as Ham. Or in the Bible, they take off the C pronunciation as Ham or Hem. It's the same word. To say Kemetic is Hamatic. It's the same word. Everybody understand that? Write that down. You'll be at camp and a Negro that thinks he's deep will hit you with that. And you'll be confounded out there. He'll tell you that he traveled, he'd been over to Egypt twice. <laughs> Not yet. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but queens know. <laughs> now, back to Genesis 10 and 6. Genesis 10 and verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim, and Phut and, Can and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, 
Seba and Havila and Sabta and Ramah and Sabdacha and the sons of Ramah, Sheba and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalna, in the land of Shinar. So now, we're going to talk about Nimrod. Nimrod, remember this, was the first African king. He was the first Kemetic king. <laughs> Watch this. Abiel, go to the article on um, Easter for me. Easter is a day that is honored by nearly all of contemporary Christianity and is used to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Eh, lie. The holiday often involves a church service at sunrise, a feast which includes an Easter, ham, decorated eggs, and stories about rabbits. Those who love truth learn to ask questions, and many questions must be asked regarding the holiday of Easter. Is it truly the day when Jesus rose from the dead? Pan up. Where did all the... Where did all the strange customs come from, which have nothing to do with the resurrection of our Savior? The purpose of this is a tract, listen good, the purpose of this tract is to help answer those questions and to help those who seek truth to draw their own conclusions. Now, the first thing we must understand is the professing Christians were not the only ones who celebrate a festival called Easter. Now, this is the next, this part I want you to see. See the word Ishtar, or Easter, which is pronounced Easter. Ishtar, or I-S-H-T-A-R, which is pronounced Easter, was a day that commemorated the resurrection of one of their gods that they called Tammuz, who was believed to be the only begotten son of the moon goddess and the sun god. Go ahead. In those, an in those ancient times, there was a man named Nimrod, who was the grandson of one of Noah's sons named Ham. You got that's what we just read about. Ham had a son named Cush who married a woman named Semiramis. Cush and Semiramis then had a son named Nimrod. After the death of his father, Nimrod married his own mother and became a powerful king. The Bible tells of this man Nimrod in Genesis 10, 8 through 10, as follows. And Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalnah and the land of Shinar. Go down. Nimrod became a godman to the people, and Semiramis, his wife and mother, became the powerful queen of ancient Babylon. Nimrod was eventually killed by an enemy, and his body was cut in pieces and sent to various parts of his kingdom. Now, this history you can read about in a book. By, what's the name of that book? It's red and white. Two, two the Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. Alexander Hislop. Write that down. Okay, Semiramis had all of the parts gathered, ex let me start above it, I, f I didn't read that. Nimrod was killed by an enemy and his body was cut in pieces and sent to various parts of his kingdom. Semiramis had all of the parts gathered except for one part that could not be found. That missing part was his reproductive organ, his rod, his penis. Semiramis claimed that Nimrod could not come back to life without it and told the people of Babylon that Nimrod had ascended to the sun and was now called Baal, the sun god. Queen Semiramis also proclaimed that Baal would be present on earth in the form of a flame, whether candle or lamp, when used in worship. Semiramis was creating a mystery religion, and with the help of Satan, she set herself up as a goddess. Semiramis claimed that she was immaculately conceived. She taught that the moon was a goddess that went through a 28-day cycle and ovulated when full. Come on. Uh, she further claimed that she came down from the moon in a giant moon egg that fell into the Euphrates River. This was to have happened at the time of the first full moon after the spring equinox. Semiramis became known as Easter, Ishtar, which is pronounced Easter, and her moon egg became known as Easter's egg. So it says... Easter soon became, Ishtar soon became pregnant and claimed that it was the rays of the sun god Baal that caused her to conceive. The son that she brought forth was named Tammuz. Tammuz was noted to be especially fond of rabbits 
and they became sacred in the ancient religion because Tammuz was believed to be the son of the sun god Baal. Tammuz, like his supposed father, became a hunter. The day came when Tammuz was killed by a wild pig. So now, I want to pause there just for a second. Well, let's go down, let's go down. Let me go for a second. Uh, Queen Ishtar told the people that Tammuz was now ascended to his father Baal, and that the two of them would be with the worshippers in the sacred candle or lamp flame as the father, son, and spirit. Notice the three. Ishtar, was not, Ishtar who was now worshipped as the mother of God and queen of heaven, continued to build her mystery religion. The queen told the worshippers that when Tammuz was killed by the wild pig, some of his blood fell on the stump of an evergreen tree, and the stump grew into a full new tree overnight. This made the evergreen tree sacred by the blood of Tammuz. So she also proclaimed a 40-day period of time of sorrow each year prior to the anniversary of the death of Tammuz. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8 now, briefly. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 14. Y'all listen up now. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 15. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east. And they worshiped the sun toward the east. Jump down to verse 14. That's what I really want. I'm sorry. Verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. So there sat women weeping for Tammuz. This is the only time you read about this name in the Bible. That's why I said there's other history books that you can read about that will explain a lot of this stuff. So the evergreen tree was the tree, or originally it was the palm tree. When we go to Jeremiah 10, let's show you that. Jeremiah 10. Give me that. All of this about Christmas and Easter goes back to the first African empire established. Or Kemetic empire, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Jeremiah 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree. Because in a, according to the Bible, the first tree that they was made, like they said here, the uh, evergreen, but the Bible says it was the palm tree. Go ahead. But speak not. They must needs be born. Meaning they must needs be carried. So all of this goes back to the first African empire that was established. Many of the customs that our mothers and fathers celebrate, America's very crafty and wise in all that they've done to deceive up to deceive our people. Let's go back to Genesis 10 briefly. And verse 8 again. Genesis 10 and 8. Genesis 10 and verse 8. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. When it says he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, it's referring that he was a hunter of souls. A hunter of souls. This religion that they were establishing, he was bringing all people into it. Go ahead. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Babel, that's where you get the term Babylon. Because it was in this kingdom that the Most High, can we get that briefly, Isaac, when uh, the Most High smote the uh, languages? In Genesis 11, let's get that. 11 and 1. Genesis 11 and verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. So back in the past, the entire earth was of one language and one speech. Everybody spoke the same dialect, and they pronounced all the words the same. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, 
and burn, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. So like you see here on the picture on the screen, they were attempting to build a tower unto heaven. Okay? Everybody understand that? Remember, this was after what significant event? What had happened? Jo Josiah? The Most High flooded the whole earth, leaving only um, Noah with his three sons and their three wives. Exactly. That's what had happened. So now, these cats that we're reading about said, listen, let's get us a name. Let's build a tower up to heaven. Okay? Come on, read that again. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let's make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. So you got to remember. Remember it said Nimrod was a hunter of men. Remember, am I quoting it right? Do it say hunter of what? A great hunter? So now, the souls he was hunting, the people, it was the souls of men. He was unifying them as one. Why? What was the purpose? To overthrow the one true God. Go ahead. Verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down. And there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Now you see where the name came from. The name of it was called Babel because of what the Lord did. Read. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Now go back to Genesis 10 and let's look at that again. Genesis 10 and verse 9 and 10 again. Genesis 10 and verse 9. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. So that's how you know that it was Nimrod that was setting and establishing this act of rebellion against the one true God. And the Most High didn't like that thing because he knew the intent of the heart was to what? Reach up to heaven to overthrow him. Not that they would have ever reached there. But he said, you know what? Just the thought of rebellion. I'm going to confound their languages. And that's what he did, confounded all their languages. Now, go to the next thing of Hammurabi. Um, I want the king, not that one, the next one. They're right there, Hammurabi. Some of y'all on the street teaching, you may hear a comedic Negro yell out the name Hammurabi. I'm going to briefly read it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It says, Hammurabi, Akkadian from Amorite, it meaning the kinsman is a healer. I'm going to jump down. Okay, it says, was the sixth king of Babylon, that is of the first Babylonian dynasty. So it's not referring to the Babylonian dynasty that you read about in Daniel, okay? It's talking about the first dynasty that we're reading about in Genesis. Right, often called, uh, what did you say? Neo-Babylonian Empire. Neo-Babylonian Empire is called. So. All right. Was the sixth king of Babylon, that is the first Babylonian dynasty. That's what we're reading about in Genesis 10. Um, now, go to Hammurabi's Code, the next one. Now, when you read about the Hammurabi Code, it says the Code of Hammurabi is a well-preserved Babylonian law code dating back to about 1772 BC. Be very, uh, give me the word, skeptical about these dates. It is one of the oldest deciphered writings of significant length in the world. The sixth Babylonian king, Ham Hammurabi, enacted the code, and partial copies exist on a human sized stone stele and various clay tablets. The code consists of 282 laws with scaled punishments, adjusting an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth as great, greater depending on social status of slave versus free man. Alrighty then, from there, 
Let's go from there. I'm going to jump to the next African empire. Let's go to Psalms 105. Psalms 105. You'll hear the Hammurabi code, my brother. That's where Moses and all that got. No. There was laws already established that our forefathers kept. Remember it said, and God breathed life into man. From the top, give me that. Let's get that real quick. Genesis 2 and 7. Because people try to be, Negroes, I'll say Negroes try to be clever. Give me that in Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. What is that talking about? Only Reuben's hand is up. Uriel. In, in Proverbs 7 verse 2, you know, it says, keep my commandments and live. So. Right. Keep my commandments and live. Write that precept down. Proverbs 7 verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. So the breath of life is referring to God breathed the law and understanding into Adam. Okay. That's what happened. Now, let's go from there. Where did I say go? Psalms 105. 105 and verse 17. Psalms 105 and verse 17. Now, this goes into the history of when Joseph was sold into Egypt. His brother sold him to some Ishmaelites who sold him to the Hamites in Egypt. Come on. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Right, because remember, Joseph was in jail for the, for the accusation Potiphar's wife made against him the false accusation that he attempted to rape her. And Potiphar put him in jail for many, many years. Okay, read that again. Verse 20. The king sent and loosed him. So there came a time when this king sent and loosed Joseph from jail. Okay, why? Because there was, he had a troubled dream and he needed someone to interpret the dream for him. Come on even the ruler of the people and let him go free he made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance because our forefather joseph interpreted the dream and he explained that there were going to be seven years of famine and drought and seven years of plenty pharaoh didn't know what to do joseph came up with a plan he says listen you take x amount a percentage of all the seven years of plenty and store it up, not to be eaten, but store it up for when the drought and the famine comes. And Pharaoh observed what Joseph did and set the forefather Joseph up second in command over Egypt, okay, which was called the land of Mizraim. Okay, read that again, Isaac. Verse 21. Now this was in the continent of Ham. Go ahead. He made him lord of his house and the ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. So Joseph taught the senators or the leaders of Egypt wisdom. So don't, a lot of our people like to glorify Egypt. The Bible says the forefather Joseph taught them wisdom. I want you to understand that thing. Go ahead. Israel also came into Egypt. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. See, it's calling the continent the land of Ham. So it's calling Egypt and the entire continent the land of Ham. Negroes call it Kem. Kem. Can we go to one of the, um, in this book called the History, what's the name of this book? The World of the Bible. Uh, from, by Educational Heritage Incorporated. Oh, look, in Yonkers, New York. It says Yonkers, New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, Los Angeles. So now, um, Aymar, who was the first African king? Imra. Who was the sixth? Hammurabi. Hammurabi. So I want you to remember that because you'll be on the street with a dummy who think he's deep. 
because he'd been to Egypt two times and don't know nothing. He went to Egypt with his eyes wide shut. <laughs> Did it come through? Okay, now this is what's under the picture. Blow it up big, let's go up. It says, Joseph rises step by step through the various offices in the household of Potiphar, Pharaoh's minister. He starts as a slave, then he becomes a successful man, Genesis 39 verse 2. He rises to be overseer of the estate. And finally, he is given absolute control of the whole household. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge. And having him, he had no concern for anything but the food which he ate. The Bible lays special stress on Joseph's jurisdiction over the house and the estate, since these constituted the main property of an Egyptian noble. Now let's go up to the picture. Now this was, see in the top right? That's the forefather Joseph. What color is he? Black. He's black. And you see the people under him are black as well. So this is all well documented in the tombs and the um, um, pyramids in Egypt. They got paintings of Joseph in there. Now, let me see where I'm going next. Bear with me a second. Let's go back. No, let's go to Genesis 46. Let's go here. I want you to listen good to this. There is, get Genesis 46, Isaac, and verse 26 to 34. Pay close attention. Genesis chapter 46 and verse 26. All the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's sons, wives, all the souls were threescore and six. And the sons of Joseph, which were born him in Egypt. That was Ephraim and Manasseh were born in Egypt. Go ahead. Were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Egypt, were threescore and ten. And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. So now, remember, Joseph had a plan to save our people from starvation and all that. He's told them, I want y'all to live in the land of Goshen, because the land of Goshen was a fertile land in Egypt. Go ahead. And they came into the land of Goshen, and Joseph made ready his chariot, and went up to meet Israel his father, to Goshen, and presented himself unto him, and he fell on his neck, and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. And Joseph said unto his brethren, and unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh, and say unto him, My brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come unto me. So now, remember, the land of Canaan was changed to what name? Let me be more specific. The land where we sojourned originally, what did the land come to be known as? Nobody knows? Liam. Became Israel. Right, became Israel. The reason I want you to see that is because you'll get some blacks that'll say that Israel is in Africa. It's not in Africa, but it was called the land of Canaan. That's the confusion they got in their heads. Okay, read that again, Isaac. Verse 31. And Joseph said unto his brethren, and unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh and say unto him, My brethren and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come unto me. The men are shepherds, for their trade have... Now I want you to listen good to this. This is what I wanted to get to. Read that again, Isaac. What verse is that? Verse 32. Listen good. And the men are shepherds, for their trade hath been to feed cattle. And they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall come to pass, when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? That you shall say, Thy servant's trade hath been about cattle from our youth even until now, both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Now there's a lot of history in there. For every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. So Joseph, listen good to what I'm saying. The forefather Joseph had a plan. He said, y'all go to jo uh, Goshen. That's the best land in Egypt. He said, I got a plan. He says, when Pharaoh asks, what's your occupation? Tell them you're a shepherd. 
He said, because every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. The Egyptians hated shepherds. That goes back to a history called the Hyksos period. Okay. Right here, it says, but I have it underlined in blue. Now, this is in a book, was that book entitled Ancient Egypt. This is put out by Time Life Books, the law, one of the largest book companies in the earth. Okay? I'm going to read now, I'm going to read exactly what it says. Now, what page is that? So, on those of you online, you might have this book. You can order it. Mm, bear with me, bear with me. So, you all see that we're bringing out the facts concerning the Bible. All of this information is, is heavy information. There's no need for our people to continue to be mixed up and confused and, and crazy. Okay, because now you're getting a straight up history. You ain't got to pretend to be a traveler in Egypt. Brothers going right. over to in Egypt and come back dumb as hell. Now you're going to get the real tr truth here. Come exactly. On. This is page 54. So write that down if you order this book. It says, the first of the great pharaohs of the new kingdom, remember that term, new kingdom, was Amos the first, who expelled the Hyksos and restored to Egypt the boundaries it held in the old kingdom. So now, see the term Hyksos there. When you look it up, Hyksos has, they have two meanings in many books. One meaning means shepherd kings, another meaning means foreign rulers. The Hyksos were shepherds. They decimated Egypt and conquered it. You got some people that say the Israelites were Hyksos. I'm going to see who's thinking. You brothers that teach on the street. And a knucklehead Negro will jump up and say the Israelites were the Hyksos. Is that true? The shepherd kings. Listen to the meaning. The shepherd kings. Joel. It's, Im it's impossible. Because Joseph wasn't yet brought into the land. The Hyksos was conquered ancient Egypt before the, um, Joseph even came into the land. Very good. The majority of the Israelites are still in the land of Canaan. Very good. I hope you heard what he said. Joseph came into the land. Wait, stand up, Joel. I'm going to ask you a question. Because somebody might say, some books say that Joseph came after the Hyksos or during the Hyksos period. How do we prove that that's, both of those statements are wrong? And Joseph came before? They say after? that Joseph came after. Before some books say during the Hyksos. How do we know that that's wrong? Because we just read that they had separated the, 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 the shepherds for the land of Goshen. So all that was already done before Joseph even got there. Isaac? Um, I didn't say right or wrong for you, Bezalel. I'm waiting. Uh, verse 34 says that um, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. That's the answer right there. Remember, Hyksos means shepherd kings. Why were they an abomination? Because they came before Joseph. How did Joseph know their history? Because it was before him. That's why he told his fathers and them, say that y'all shepherds. Because the Hyksos came prior. Prior. Now, somebody might say, the Israelites were the Hyksos. Israelites were not. Get Genesis 15, 13, please. Israel was not the shepherd kings. Here's the proof. Some books say, that's why you got to be careful with these books. If it don't filter through the Bible, it's garbage. <laughs> Genesis 15, 13. Genesis 15 and verse 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Did it say that we should be kings? And they shall afflict them 400 years. We were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. We were slaves in Egypt, in Africa, for 400 years. We were never the kings in there. Never. I hope y'all understand it, because a Negro is dumb. One of those Kemites, what's the name of that, that movie they got? Color? Color. color Hidden colors. Oh, dumb. They try to say, everybody black was us. No, everybody black ain't us. Watch this. Exodus 1 and 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 1 and verse 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, 
Gad and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. But Joseph was in Egypt already, and Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose, arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. There arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Abiel, go back to that last one with the blue coloring that I had. Okay, right there. The first of the great fowls of the new kingdom was Amos the first, who expelled the Hyksos and restored Egypt, the boundaries they had held in the old kingdom. Amenhotep the first, his son, extended the boundary farther south, and he started the country on an era of prosperity. That would last for 150 years. Thutmose the first, the third pharaoh of the dynasty, pushed the frontiers farther still, south beyond the fourth cataract, and northeast of Palestine and Syria. Now, okay. Now you see this dynasty? 18th dynasty. Let's see the names. These are, this family line, this is one whole family here, and they left a lot of names out. But when you look up the uh, 18th dynasty, it, it gives you more names. But these were the family that knew not Joseph. You got Thutmose III, Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut was the first female pharaoh. You got Amenhotep III, you got Akhenaten. Akhenaten is the one, the pharaoh that introdu introduced um, a singular god worship. Uh, you got Tutankhamun, Horemheb, and there's many others. And we're going to name, go back out, Abiel, to the pictures. Okay, you see it on the right, I mean the left. Nefertiti, this is who the black woman glorifies after. She was a B.I.T. And she used to whoop the hell out of the American, these black women over, but they don't know no history. They wear their earrings, glorifying her. Oh, Nefertiti! She was a demon. These people had put us in much affliction. That's Queen Hesheshpet on the right, the first female pharaoh. Go down. There's Thutmose the third. Go down. You got Ramses the second, Amenhotep the third. All of them was of the same family line. They were wicked as hell. Let's go back to Exodus now. Exodus 1 and verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Now write this down. The 18th dynasty is known as the New Kingdom. Okay. I can't, I can't see that, Abiel. Okay, now look. Here's the other names for the 18th. See, you got Amos the first. You got Amenhotep the first, Thutmose the first, Thutmose the second, Hatshepsut, Thutmose the third, Amenhotep the second, Thutmose the fourth, Amenhotep the third, Akhenaten, uh, Shmen, I can't even pronounce that. Uh, that next one I can't pronounce either. Tutankhamun, that's King Tut, the boy king. That old King Tut king is that little boy demon. That's what he was. I, Horenheb, was that it? Go on. Then the next was the, the 19th dynasty. But the new king is referring to um, those pharaohs during the time of the 18th dynasty. Those were the pharaohs. So in verse 8 again, Isaac. Exodus 1 and verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Which knew not Joseph. Okay. So remember, between you had pharaohs a few set up prior to the 18th dynasty, um, because prior to Joseph, who was ruling? The Hyksos was in there. You had the Hyksos, which were aliens. They were foreign kings. They were before Joseph, and Joseph understood the history of how they were uh, expelled. That's why he was able to tell his father, tell this current pharaoh that you're shepherds, because they won't want to sit with you. They won't, don't want to be with you. They'll let you stay in the land of Goshen. Where we at Isaac, verse 9? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Verse 9, and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. Bezalel, can you come take a photo of this and email it to us, please? 
We did again, Isaac. I'm sorry. Verse 10. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, the Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Write this down. Python and Ramses are located in the Valley of the Kings. Python and Ramses are located in the Valley of the Kings. Go to the images, um, Abiel. Okay. This is in one of the tombs. This shows Israelites building pyramids. Okay, now you can see, point to the whitewashing Abigail so everybody can see how they tried to whitewash the images. Out, y'all, what's up? Can you show them, please? The elder is speaking of these people here. You see how the color is scraped? Let me just show you how they started out. Look at, you see this one here? This is where they started scratching them off. Can y'all see that? You see the, how the feet? They went and took the color. That's right, blow it up so they can see. They started taking the color off of them. Okay? The original color was this dark color here. There's okay. some books that show them darker right. than that. Exactly. I got a book at home. I, if I'd have known we was in the subject, I'd have showed it. Now, open it back, close it back up a little bit. Now, look at this one here. He's completely, they scraped them completely down. And that's what they were going to do with these. I wonder what stopped them. <laughs> you understand? So that's what we're looking at. Exactly. Can y'all see that? Okay. Let me get All of this was an, an, an attempt to lie about history, like that movie, The Ten Commandments. Yeah. Give me the next one, Abiel. It says, the painting reproduced here from the tomb at, of Rechmir at Thebes, uh, 15th century BC, shows how bricks were made in Egypt. Just a highlighted part. Is that another workman that I'm reading? No, no, just that top one right there. Another workman. Right here? No, you can read that. I'm going to explain that too. Okay. Uh, another workman is putting the bricks out to dry, top left. The laborers included a bearded Semite and a darker skinned Nubian. Now, let me tell you why they got that in there. Because there's another book that says that those are the Israelites. They got uh, a. <laughs> It says a bearded Semite, which is an Israelite. Then they got, and a darker skinned Nubian. The darker skinned Nubian, guess what he is? An Israelite. No, an Israelite. Because they were all Israelites that was there at this time, during the time of Rechmir in Thebes. Okay? Now, let's get some more. Give me the next picture. Uh, not yet. Yeah, yeah, give me those two. Give me those two. I say something real quick. Yeah, go ahead. See, like they put the word Nubians in there, that's to throw you so called Negroes off. Okay, they're throwing, they're throwing word in there and you get confused and you won't understand that. Yeah. I've seen books where they had the exact same pictures talking about the same thing and then they put the correct word in another passage. I got this exact picture in another book and they tell you that those were the Israelites. Okay, now I want you all to see this. This is page 124. See above it, it says, this is a grievous morning to the Egyptians. The pictures are, as I know it's blurry. The pictures are reproduced from the tomb of Neferhotep, dating from the end of the 18th dynasty. Always remember, 18th dynasty is Israelites. Now go to the picture, Abiel, before it. Right before it. This is the picture. 18th dynasty is referring to the Israelites. Now I want you to see, see, notice some of them got bald heads. Y'all see that? This is why when we came out of Egypt, get Leviticus 19.27. This is why God gave us this law. Because we followed all the customs of ancient Egypt. Leviticus 19 and verse 27. You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. So now, you got to ask, why did we get that law? Because when we came out of Egypt, we were doing that. We were marring off our beards and shaving our heads. Guess what? Just like here in America. Same, that's why God calls this place spiritual. Give me that, Isaac, Revelation 11. 
Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The, their dead bodies referring to the Israelites without knowledge, without understanding. The great city is Babylon the Great. Right? Which spiritually, this place is spiritually, is called Sodom and Egypt. This place is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Why Egypt? Because we follow all the customs of ancient Egypt here. That's why Negroes want to be like Mike. They want to bald their head, shave, shave the beards off, jump around and entertain the same foolishness. Give me the next picture, Abiel. Bear with us a second. Okay. Let's blow that up. Go ahead, y'all. Well, I'll just read it. But this right here is showing you about the Israelites that was in Egypt. And you, what you're looking at is actual uh, relics of those buildings. Let me, read, let me read that information up under it. Then we'll talk about the picture for a moment. It says, the thousands of war captives who were transformed into slaves made it possible for the Egyptian kings to implement their feats of engineering. Chained captives are shown in these painted clay facing plaques from a building erected by Ramses II. We just got to reading about Ramses II and the elder was showing y'all the dynasties. So who were, the, who were the chained captives that was under Ramses? We were just reading that in the Bible. Israelites. So go back to the picture. That's not a Nubian there, so you can understand. That's an Israelite. And look at the color. Look at the lips. Look at the, look at the, look at the color of the face as compared to the garment. So don't tell me they didn't have color. I need y'all to see this. Can y'all see that? Okay, so this is not a comic book that we're showing you. This is the real deal. Okay, erected by Ramses II, meaning in slavery. Because we were, as, can you see the yoke of iron on the neck? Go back at it again. Look at that, look at that iron collar that's on the neck. That's the same type of yoke of iron that America put on us here. Very similar. There you go. Right there. There you go. How you like that? So we're reading about ancient Egypt, and this is the spiritual Egypt. Can we so look at you the ancient same Egypt exactly? one again and look at them together, Abiel? Can we do that? That's why God said this place is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. It's the same type of yokes of iron with the hooks at the end. Abiel, point to the hooks on the, that one. No, no, not that one. The other one. No, up. Look, look at the hook. What you thought that was a flower? That was hooks. Okay, now the, the wording was talking about both pictures, but I just want y'all to take a good look at the pictures so that you can see that these were the Israelites. These were not Nubians. That's why we're reading here in Exodus. It's telling you what it's talking about. It's telling you that these were the Israelites. The Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you're looking at. You see the yoke, another yoke of iron on their neck. Look at the garment as compared to the face. Can y'all see this? Okay. All right, Elder. You can take it back. So now, Isaac. Now, what I want you to remember from the 18th, Don, Abiel, oh, go back. Wait a minute. Yeah, you can, you can read it. Let's read it. it. Says, I think it says the 19th. Yeah, it does right, right. there. Read that right. Put up big words. Let me read it. Uh, let me read it again. The thousands of war captives. Now we found out who, who, who were the war captives, right? It says the thousands of war captives, Israelites, who were transformed into slaves made it possible for the Egyptian kings to implement their feats of engineering. Chained captives. That's the pictures that we were looking at earlier. Okay, so like the elder said, those, was not, those were not flowers. Those were chained, iron collars, so you can understand. Chained captives are shown on these painted, on these painted clay facing plaques from a building erected by Ramses II. Did Ramses actually do the work of erecting the building? No. Because no. that's what you just read here. He said, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Israelites built that. So that's what you're looking at. These are the people that built it. It says, uh, chain captives are shown on these painted clay facing plaques from a building erected by Ramses II in honor of the king's brave warriors from the period of the 19th dynasty, the Louvre Paris. So now let's look at the 19th dynasty. Abiel, go back to the picture that I showed King Tut, the boy king. 
Right there. Click that right there. So now, see, 18, see go up. 18th Dynasty, you see some of those names. Now you see 19th Dynasty. Notice it says Seti the first and Ramses the second. Right there. Ramses the second is where we made our exodus from. So all prior to that is when we was in captivity under Egypt. Everybody understand that? All right. God just point us yeah, yeah, women book out, so. Now, to the, to the amazement of the Negro, this is in a book entitled Jewish Civilization. Did y'all hear what I said? I said this is in a book entitled Jewish Civilization. And what pictures do we find in there? Black people. Okay, but a so-called Negro don't know nothing about a book like this. Okay? And this particular book here, I got this at a, uh, a Strands, this was at a Strands bookstore years ago. And, these, and this was a bookstore where they have the books in there that are donated. Because scholars give their books away. They send them, they give them to these, uh, to these bookstores. And then the different scholars go back and forth and pa pass these books back and, back and forth among each other. But in that, in that uh, class that we did called Iconoclasm, remember that, I thought? Y'all remember that, right? The Iconoclasm, going many days without, without an image, that, that class. We went into detail on how, the, how, these, how these, uh, these scholars have these books locked up in their leading universities talking about you. And they pass these books backwards and forwards because they themselves have to know what not to teach you. So they know the history. Exactly. Now, in Babylon the Timbuktu, what page were that, Don? This is page uh, 64 by Rudolf R. Windsor. Now, in this book, I've read it. Rudolf, do not take everything he says yeah, in his no. book for granted. I mean, for, not for granted, uh, for gospel. Because he goes off about a lot of, he goes into Japhet being white when there's no biblical proof. He goes off on a lot of things, but some things are correct. Read that, I thought. Uh, page 64. During the period that the Hebrews are slaves for Pharaoh, they built many of the megalithic structures. The Hebrews erected some pyramids. Notice it says the Hebrews erected some pyramids. Israel did not build all the pyramids. That's why I said specifically the Valley of the Kings, 18th Dynasty, beginning of 19th Dynasty. You got to remember that. Because if you say the Israelites built all the pyramids, somebody's going to prove you wrong. Because there were pharaohs set up way before that that had pyramids. We did again, I thought. For Pharaoh, they built many of the megalithic structures. The Hebrews erected some pyramids. They dug a great many channels for the river. They built walls for the cities, like here in America, Wall Street. They built walls for the cities and ramparts. They constructed the halls at Karnak for Tutmos I. They built temple pylons, hypostyle halls, and an obelisk for Aminotep III. By the edict of Ramses II, they constructed at Thebes the temple of the Ramesseum with its colossal statues of himself. And they built the treasure cities of Python and Ramses. Right. Let's look at the treasure city of Ramses. Did I send y'all that picture? Let me look. I hope I did. Yeah, there's one more. Go through it. Go back to the little, uh, no, it ain't even there. Find me, find me that, please. I thought I sent it. Huh? You go ahead. Is this page 69? Ramses II is also known for his national public work projects because these projects require the forced labor of thousands of Hebrew slaves. He is known as the Pharaoh of the Oppression. Ramses, I said, Ramses. That's it. Go ahead, read it again. I'm sorry. Okay, Ramses, Ramses II is page 69. Ramses II is also known for his national public work projects because these projects require the forced labor of thousands of Hebrew slaves. He is known as the Pharaoh of the Oppression. Okay, here's one of the treasured cities of Python and Ramses. That's one right there. All right, go to the next picture, Abiel. This is what the Israelites built. See the face right there? See the face right there? Blow that one up. That's an image of them. Okay, Israel did that. We had to carve these images. It's right here, it says it right here. Right. It says the black Jews constructed the treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Ramses developed the Nile Delta and had the slaves build Egypt's megaliths. The colonnade at Luxor and its gigantic pylon, in front of which he placed six colossal statues of himself. Right there. There's another one right there. 
Israel did this. That's why you got to know the Pharaoh and know the dynasty. Find out what dynasty. It's 18th and 19th. That's us. We did that. Read that again. I thought I'm sorry. Yeah. The black Jews constructed the treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Ramses developed the Nile Delta and had the slaves build Egypt's megaliths. The colonnade at Luxor and its gigantic pylon in front of which he placed six colossal statues of himself. That's one of the six colossal statues right there on the left. Uh -huh. This is what the Israelites were forced to build. Each of these statues was almost 60 feet high. Y'all see that? Damn. Okay. This is King Tut. This is a painting of King Tut. Okay. Do y'all see the people behind him marching? Those are the Israelites. That's why you got to know, like I said before, the dynasties. Because you look at it, go, oh, those are all Egyptians. No, they're not. Even the people with fanning the Pharaoh. See the bottom, the two black, black ones? That's Israel too. Fanning him. All them people marching behind him with horns or whatever, Israel. Okay? Wait, let me look at it. Make sure I ain't saying it wrong. Let me see what they're holding. Abiel, tell me what they're holding in their hand. I can't see. Are those weapons? If those are weapons, no, those are not Israelite. Those are weapons and swords. So Israel is right there. Wait, let me go over there. I got to go over there. Here's the pans. Those are pans in their hand. Real high up. Give me your mic. All right. Here. Can you hear me? All right. Here's King Tut. Go back. Move over. So you're looking at this. These are weapons here. So seeing the weapons, we wasn't going to war with Pharaoh. The chariots, that wasn't us. Here, this is not us. So when you look at this, you go, hmm, 18th dynasty, where the Israelites at? Mm. Oh, look, the slaves. The slaves, the two little black, black ones, that's Israel here. Mm -hmm. Not these ones in the chariots or with the weapons. Black, black ones. Them two ones burnt in the furnace right there. Yep. That's them. That's Israel right there, them yep. two. But you got to know the dynasties and where, where we were at. Wearing damn dresses. Try to give us pants. Look at that, they dress. Uh, Exodus. Yeah, I'm read it. That's it. That's, that's why they gave us pants. See, there was some men wearing loincloths. So everything was hanging. He said, you don't wear some pants. Most I said, nah, I won't see that. Y'all don't wear some pants. Let's get that scripture. Exodus. Come on. Exodus. Tell, Tell have Isaac get it. Isaac. Exodus 28, and you know what I want. 41. Um, 42. Exodus chapter 28, verse 42. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness. From the loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. But in Egypt, the men didn't wear that. They wore loincloths. That's what they wore. So he said, the most I said, no more of that you're going to put on pants. You're going to wear pants, breeches from now on. Now you're trying to bring it back now. Egypt again. You got men wearing skirts all over again here in America. You're trying to push that nonsense. Spiritual Egypt once again. Go ahead. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his son. The men, the males, the males, not the women, not the daughters. Go ahead. When they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation, or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place. They were standing on a high altar where everyone can see, everyone's looking under them. Go ahead. That they bear not iniquity you and want, die. You don't want to see their nakedness. That's their iniquity. That you see not their nakedness. Unlike them loincloths they wore in Egypt, we saw everything. So he must have said, from now on you're going to wear pants. Go ahead. It shall be a statue forever unto him and his seed after him. That's it. So I instituted pants. Right. Let's read this, Abiel. It says, the statues at Abel Simbel are a monument to Egyptian architecture. Honor... Honor and construction. Pharaoh Ramses II or Ramses the Great issued the construction of seven temples in the Nubian region cut from raw rock. That's what the Israelites did. The temple at Abu Simbel is the greatest of them all. Israel built the greatest of them all. That's what they're saying right here. When they say cut from raw rock, do you know how hard that is? Cut from raw rock. It says, work began on the temple early in Ramses II's reign as Pharaoh and was completed at roughly the midway point of his rule. Midway because Israel left. <laughs> Four 67-foot-high statues of the great Ramses II are situated at the exterior of the temple. 
Now, can we get X, Acts 7, verse 22? Because as you all know, Moses was born, and Moses was the one that Most High chose to lead us out of Africa, out of Egypt. Right, Abia, blow that up. I want y'all to look inside some of these temples. Look at the paintings on the walls. These are black. What color are they? They are black. And you get, you know, you get some Edomites that think the Egyptians were white. Dumb as hell. And think the Israelites were white. But when you go, can we go back to that, Abiel? But when you go in there, like the Negro, well, the Negro that said he went there twice, he did admit that they were all black. And it shows you the pharaohs and their slaves on the wall. Okay? Isaac, where we at? Acts 7 and verse 22. I want you to listen good to this. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Read that again. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Abiel, can we get the next picture? Yeah. It said, read it again, Isaac. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. Right. Yes. And when he was... I said, now, this is from the book Babylon of Timbuktu. Now, um, see what it says we, I'm going to start there. It says, we must remember that Egypt possessed institutions of higher learning and that Pharaoh's palace and temple was the chief center of the educated class. Read that again, Isaac. Verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. It says, Moses was exposed to the best Egypt had to afford. Those who think Moses was just an ignorant religious leader are quite wrong. Moses knew the political, social, and natural sciences of Egypt. He learned the religious system, the political system, mathematics, geometry, biology, chemistry, anatomy, foreign languages, law, engineering, and military tactics. That's who Moses was. Read that again, Isaac. Acts 7, verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. So y'all see where the forefather Moses come from. He didn't come from a low life. He came from uh, a prestigious life. Yes. What page was that? Uh, let me look at it. I didn't type it in there. What page is that, I thought? Bear with us a second. Bear with me. Oh, it's page 67 in From Babylon to Timbuktu. Page 67. Now, yes. So, Elder, Moses didn't hang out in his mom's basement? No, he didn't hang out in his mama's basement. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Oh, man. Isaac, read that man. verse again. Acts 7, verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. Now, notice it said foreign languages there, right? And there it said he was mighty in words. Can you give me that scripture where it says Moses said he was not of good of tongue? That one. Because you get these dummies that say Moses had a stutter. A -da 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 -da. Moses did not study. It said he was mighty in words. Now we're going to get to understanding on this verse. Exodus 4. Exodus 4, 10. Give me that, Isaac. The book of Exodus, chapter 4 and verse 10. Remember, he was raised in the house of Pharaoh. When the Pharaohs conquered people, Moses was sent to uh, concourse with them. Watch this. Read that. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech. I am slow of speech. And of a slow tongue. And of a slow tongue. Was that it? Yep, that's it on So what was he making reference to? What was Moses making reference to, Joel? Moses was raised in the house of Pharaoh mainly, so he, was, uh, he wasn't eloquent in the Hebrew. Exactly. That's why Aaron was sent with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you had your hand up about something else? Okay. Uh, last scripture. Get me uh, uh, Hebrews 11, I think. About Moses, right? He was 12. One of those two. 11. Yeah, about Moses refused. Hebrews 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So that's what Moses did when he repented of his sins. He refused to be called an African prince. To be called Pharaoh's son... 
Pharaoh's daughter's son, you know what kind of prestige you got? What kind of popularity, fame, and fortune? Moses gave all that up. Go ahead. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Y'all see how our forefather Moses got down? He said, you know what? Egypt's going to be destroyed. I better get with the winning side with the most high and my people of Israel. That's what Moses did. That's what we got to do too. That's a message for today because our people, right, look at that, that picture right there. They got no photos inside the temple. They don't want people to take pictures up in there. Now, when you look at the movie, The Ten Commandments by Cecil B. DeMille, he used the actual artifacts in the movie. Mm -hmm. Just put your movie thing on pause and look in the backgrounds. You see Israelites black, Moses black, you see all the pharaohs black. That's what you see. But our people just go, you better, Charles Heston, wow, ooh, yeah. Simple as hell, yes. Elder, in, the, in that Bible series, they did the same thing. The Pharaoh's son was playing with a toy, and the toy was black as night. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Yes, go ahead. What you got? I wanted to make a point. I just wanted to wait for the elder to finish. The reason why he's briefing you on this stuff, because a lot of you at the time when there were schools back in the 80s and the 90s for this garbage, y'all was too young. Some of y'all wasn't alive in here. If you remember y'all was up, when the rap game was progressing, there was rappers who was identifying themselves with the Egyptians. Yeah. You had a rapper, King Tut. You had a rap group, Brand Nubians. You had yeah. Queen Latifah come up. Yeah. You had a group from England called Loose Ends. If you watch their video, they had a lot of Egypt stuff in there. Yeah. So the, the people who are going to come up and try to battle you at the Cavs are going to be old people, my age and up. Okay? The early 90s, it died out. You understand? So... You gotta have some old dude who's still holding on to that. The way you have some lost Israelite men still holding on to Islam. So they're gonna come and try to battle you with that Egyptian garbage. When I was in high school, that stuff was prevalent at the time. Like the elder brought out, the sister used to have the Nefertiti earrings. They used to have the picture of Nefertiti on their, sh on their shirts. It just died. If you look at Salt and Pepper, the rappers, when they came out, they was into that garbage. So as but in the past 20 year span, it just, it just faded. It was nothing. So if you look at the dude that's coming up, you could bring him back to that era and explain to him, Negro, you're lost. That came and went. It was dead. So that's why the elders bringing it out. Because at our time, that stuff, Negroes felt educated because they knew it. Right. But it's garbage. It's nonsense. Exactly. Get that in Exodus 11 and 7, Isaac. Y'all know the scripture. But now y'all got some meat behind it. You understand now. Exodus 11 and 7. Exodus chapter 11 and verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Right. Blow that up big right there, Abiel. That's, what group is that? Loose end. That is not new sense. That's X Clan. X Clan. Now, y'all see the Egyptian Ankh, right? Abiel, can you circle the top? Yes. See those? No, no, not his head. I said Ankh. Negroes used to be walking the street with that garbage in the early 80s, exactly. late 90s. Y'all see the Ankh on him? Who knows what the Ankh symbolizes? Who knows what the Ankh? Ramaya. The Ankh is an ancient Egyptian symbol for eternal life. Right. What does the top of it represent? The top. Nimrod. No. Oh. Isaac. The top represents a vagina. Right. The top with the circle represents a vagina. The bottom half represents the penis, the male phallus. Yep. It was a symbol of life. Okay? And they say, and when, the, when the Pharaoh died, all the, the servants of his house was buried alive in the tomb with him. Us. Yep. Us. And we was that symbol was set up to, so that in the afterlife we would come back and be his slaves. Now give me that in ex, I mean Ezekiel uh, 29 or 28. Y'all know what I want, yep. Isaac. 14, 10 to 14, that's what I want. I need y'all to put these scriptures in your repertoire. Because you get a nigger roll on y'all. Talking about Kemet. We Kemetic, my brother. 
Just look at him and say, ah, like Bugs Bunny used to say, ah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't remember that, Elder. Oh, they don't no, remember, they don't remember. Oh, Bugs Bunny. That's that. They're looking at Bugs Bunny now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those were the good cartoons. <laughs> the stuff y'all watch now is garbage. <laughs> Where are we going? Ezekiel 29 and 10, right? Yes. Ezekiel 29 and verse 10. So I want y'all to put this in your repertoire. Go ahead. Behold, therefore I am against thee and against thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate from the tower of Syene even unto the border of Ethiopia. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be in inhabited 40 years. And I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate. And her cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate 40 years. And I will scatter the Egyptians among na the nations and I will disperse them through the country. So the real ancient Egyptians were scattered and dispersed. The people you see in Egypt today, the Arabs, those are not the ancient Egyptians. Go ahead. Yet thus saith the Lord God, at the end of 40 years will I gather the Egyptians from the people whether they were scattered. So yeah, they came back, the real Egyptians, those Sudanese, the Watusis, they came back, but they didn't go back to that land because the uh, Arabs was whooping their behind. Go ahead. And I will bring again the captivity of Egypt and will cause them to return into the land of Pathros, into the land of their habitation. Here come. And they shall be there a base kingdom. You see what God said about Egypt? It shall be there a base kingdom. So what you're trying to glorify Egypt for? It's God said it's a base kingdom, meaning the lowest of all kingdoms. You got niggas talking about kingdom. Imhotep, my brother. Uh, my mother, my godmother, always, what's that? She always says, Hotep, Hotep, Shalom. <laughs> you know the reason why a Negro would try to attach themselves to Egyptian and all that stuff? Because he doesn't know who he is. Right. Read verse 15 That's for what them, the problem Isaac. Is. Watch this. Verse 15. This is the, to get to the point you want to hit him with, verse 15. It shall be the basis of the kingdoms. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations, for I will diminish them, that they shall no more rule over the nations. You see what God said, prophesied about Egypt? He made them the lowest of all kingdoms. And he prophesied they would never rule over the nations ever again. But Negroes, like you were saying, they try to hold on to something they have no understanding about. The Most High said, you're the Israelites. And he said he set us above the nations. Okay, was there anything I want to bring out? I'm going to end it there. Any questions? Yes.